Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to online worship with the American International Church. To you, O God of creation, we sing a new song of praise, a song of trees planted by streams of living water, a song of mountains clapping their hands for joy, a song of cities delighting in heavenly harmony, a song of people that were lost and have been found. For the earth is the Lord's and we shall be glad in it. Hallelujah. As we enter into worship together from wherever you are and whatever day you are watching this video, let us invoke the Spirit of God to be present among us, uniting us across time and space. Pray in this invocation with me. Faithful God, you draw near to us in our joy and in our grief, in our hope and in our despair. When we are bowed down, you raise us anew. When we see only gloom, you shine on us. God of peace and joy, move among us this hour. Open our eyes, dispel our fears, and may we taste the sweetness of your love. Amen. And now as we join the congregation in the sanctuary as this service was recorded, I invite you to join with us, passing the peace of Christ to the people you know and love because we are forgiven and reconciled people together. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Amen. 
they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to them all, This is holy day to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the Lord. The Lord. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites come to the people, saying, be still, for this is a holy day. Do not grieve. Then all the people went away to drink, to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. <laughs>
Will you join with me in a word of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So if you go online and you search for Nehemiah 8, just like this text that we're reading today, you actually don't get websites for the Bible. You get advertisements. See, this particular chunk of scripture contains one of those famous biblical phrases of comfort. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so, when you Google Nehemiah 8, you get Etsy and eBay and Wayfair encouraging you to buy Nehemiah 8 merchandise on anything from coffee mugs to wall hangings, coasters, refrigerator magnets, t-shirts, throw pillows, even socks. I learned this little catchphrase, this little tiny excerpt of scripture when I was probably about Laura's age, really, because we learned a little song that we used to sing every week in Sunday school. If you know it, sing it with me, help me out. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Right? So I knew it from the time I was about this high, with all those notes in between. But I confess, I never actually knew where it came from or paid much attention to what it might mean. Kind of like singing the song, I just repeated it. All these many years later as a grown up, that song still gets stuck in my head and I just sing it. Kind of like those mugs and wall hangings and the cross stitch, it, it looks nice. It seems calming, pleasant. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's only this week, finally cracking on and opening up Nehemiah, that I had any idea that it was a lie and a wider story. I just always figured it was some bit of poetry from the Psalms, or a proverb maybe, or something that Paul put out in those long lists of instructions he always was giving. But no, this is a part of a story. In fact, the story it comes from is the first evidence we have of mass Bible study taking place. The people have returned from the exile. They are in Jerusalem. They've been there for years, but they're still working on rebuilding. And they come to Ezra. Now you notice we're in Nehemiah, reading about Ezra. The books overlap in their timeline, so things go in and out. And they go to Ezra and they say, we built a platform. Will you please read the scriptures to us? Will you read to us from the Torah? And so Ezra steps up and begins to read. And there are 13 other leaders standing on the platform with him. And then there are Levites teaching in small group, offering interpretation. Maybe some of them have forgotten Hebrew and they need translation into Aramaic. Maybe they just need to know what some of those big official words mean, but they're, they're out there. And in groups, large and small, they are studying the scriptures together. And Ezra is reading and looks out over the congregation and they're bawling. And he says, what, what, what is happening here? Why are you weeping? We, we never get quite the answer to the question, but the, the best theory is, is that they we're hearing for maybe the first time all the ways that God wanted them to live with one another as a community, and they were seeing how far they had fallen short. For the first time, someone was drawing a picture for them of how God's community could be as one. And it was all so far away. They'd been working so hard, but the walls around them in Jerusalem were 
were still in ruins. And the, the vision they were hearing from the scripture seemed impossible with the obstacles in their way. Ezra and those other leaders on the platform and all the TAs, the Levites out among the community stepped in immediately and said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is not a pleasant word. This is a stop crying, you're missing the point. <laughs> this is an abrupt interruption of their outpouring. Now, we know that there had been ways and space made for lament throughout this process of rebuilding. But they make it clear, this is not that time. It's time to quit your crying. Because we have joy today to celebrate. Have you ever um, had somebody to uh, come up to you when you were crying and say, stop crying? It's very effective, don't you think? It's even more effective than they say, come on, smile, be happy. You can imagine that it might not have been so well received among the people. After all, I think they were genuinely moved with this grief. But here's the thing that they had missed out on. Here's the interpretation and the clarification that Ezra and the other teachers offer. When you weep in response to the scriptures in this setting, then you are making this story about you and about all the ways that you have failed and about all the ways that you have depended on God and you have not come through. It's our instinct, isn't it? Our instinct is to look at our faith to sit in church and make our relationship to God depend on what we do, for good or for ill. But this day, in this gathering, Ezra reminds the people that their relationship is about what God has done. And that when they get together to hear this story, the story is supposed to remind them of God's generosity and God's faithfulness and God's love and God's mercy, which are everlasting. And always, no matter how far we've strayed and how much we've failed, always room for rejoicing. That's the story we hear over and over again in the scriptures. The people we'd like to see as biblical heroes are more often disappointments, failures in their faithfulness. Yet time and time again, God forgives and redeems them, makes use of their lives, even so. And God can and will do the same for us. And that, Ezra and the teachers say, that is the source of our joy. Not because we are good, not because we've gotten it right, not because we've built such lovely walls, but standing in the midst of the ruins, not just the ruins of the wives, but the ruins of the community, we can still proclaim that God is good. And God is faithful, and therefore there is room for joy. Notice it's not our joy, it's the joy of the Lord. It's God's love and faithfulness. That is our strength, because we can rely on it no matter what. I think it's tempting for us to stand and look around us and see ruins, see poverty and injustice, violence and prejudice, climate change and our inaction, threaten catastrophe, surely this is not the time for joy. 
Surely, we shouldn't be following the instructions of the teachers who say, have something rich to eat, have something sweet to drink. Shouldn't we be weeping? This story reminds us that we don't just come here to reflect on what we're doing. We come to remember what God is doing. The story we gather to tell and retell is the promise of God's unending faithfulness and refusal to give up on us. That's the joy of the Lord. And the second half, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It does not let us off the hook. <laughs> it does not say, oh, don't worry, be happy. Go about your business, get on with it, it'll be fine, I'll take care of it. No, 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 no. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy of the Lord is not our peace. Not our protection in this case, not even our freedom. It's our strength. It is what we need and what we can claim to get the power and the stamina we need to keep on building and rebuilding those healing walls in Jerusalem, those healing bonds of community in the struggle for justice, those healing bonds of love between one another and all around the world. The joy of the Lord is never our excuse. It is the strength that keeps us going in the work of God's love. It is the secure knowledge that even though we may fail, God will not. And so when we fail, we can get back up again and get back to work. Because God's grace will find a way to keep working in us and through us. The joy of the Lord is our strength. worth a coffee mug or a wall hanging, don't you think? But maybe not just because it's pleasant, but because we all know what it's like to fail and fall and fall short. And we need to be reminded that this isn't just our story, it is God's story. And God's mercy and love and faithfulness are everlasting. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Oh God, we are indeed tempted to see ruins, to weep at times when we compare the promises of your salvation and justice to the world around us. Yet we hear this challenging call to rejoice, to indulge in celebration because of your grace and your joy. And so, God, we ask you to stir our souls with your love and grace, that we may know the richness of life in your presence. Touch our hearts with your compassion and kindness, that we may be revived with laughter and warmed with gladness. Move our hands with your own goodness and self-sacrificing care for us, that we may serve others as you came to serve. And Lord, we lift up the sorrows and brokenness of the world around us, knowing that there are so many who need your joy to be their strength and your healing to mend their brokenness. In our moments of silence this morning, we lift up the names and faces of those we know to you. You who already know their names and their needs. We pray for all in our hearts who are ill and suffering from disease. We pray for all who are on the financial edge, struggling to pay their rent and their bills. We pray for those whose mental health seems to be unraveled. We pray for all who suffer at the hand of another, whether manipulation and abuse, unjust treatment in the workplaces, or threats and violence. We pray for those migrating around our globe today in search of safety from fires and a climate crisis or from security from oppression. O oh Lord, we offer these prayers with hope and joy because of your faithful provision. As you have provided breath in our lungs this day, as you have always made a way for your people where there seems to be no way, as you promise to make all things new, strengthen us with your joy today as we bring our prayers to you with the global community of your people, praying together as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome once again to worship at the American International Church. It is good to see you here and to worship in joy with you together. And welcome to those of you joining us online as well. If you're a guest with us today, we are especially glad to see you. Although, if you've been here many times, we're glad to see you too. But if you would like to share your details with us for the first time, uh, we have some slips of paper in the back to collect your details, or there's a QR code in the bulletin as well if you prefer to just fill it out from the pew on your smartphone. Uh, one bit of news that you might be eager to know, uh, since Scott Stroman is listed on the invocation in our bulletin, if you're concerned for Scott's health, that is merely a typo. This was a planned absence for Scott this morning. Uh, all is well. That was just a mistake in the printing of our bulletin. Uh, a more exciting bit of news of the church, though, is that as of today, 
our fellowship hour with coffee and tea is returning. Uh, after the service, we invite you outside to collect uh, a cup of tea or coffee that will be served for you and to go down the stairs where we have some space to safely chat with each other and uh, go back to a little bit of our old ways of enjoying some pre-packaged biscuits and some safely served tea and coffee and fellowship <laughs> together a little bit. If you are joining us online, we welcome you back here in the sanctuary as soon as you feel safe and able to rejoin us. We look forward to fellowshipping with you as well. Uh, one last thing that I want to note for us is that our crash is reopened and our children are uh, welcome back here in church in person. We have Sunday school that happens twice a month now after the worship service. The next time that we'll hold that is next Sunday, the 10th of October. We welcome all of our families with children to bring uh, their children where we can uh, engage with them and teach them and learn from them here in worship. My friends, I hope that this has been a joyful time of worship for you, and I invite all of us to respond with joyful generosity in response to God's own generosity toward us. If you'd like to uh, make a donation here in person, there's a plate at the back, or uh, details for how to give my bank transfer are there in the bulletin as well. Let us continue to worship together through singing together.
strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine and 10,000 beside. As you go, may you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.